Hey there guys, this is my general purpose, all purpose tools that I usually take with me everywhere I go. These tools are most often used and although I have a lot of other tools, these are the main ones that I carry with me all the time. Uh, I put them all in this uh, tool tote that has 23 pockets. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna sort of go one side at a time and empty out all the pockets and show you guys what I've got in here. And it might give you guys a good idea of what kind of tools you might wanna get, things that you might be missing, and just give you a general idea of what kind of tools are most often used. Now I'm gonna try to list as much of this as I can in the description of this video. So if you guys are interested in any particular tool, you should be able to find it in the description of this video and a link to it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off on this side of this tool bag, and I'm gonna go ahead and start from this pocket here. Over here, we got some diagonal cutters, or side cutters, sometimes they're referred to. These are mainly used to cut wire, screws, nails, springs, plastics, to name a few things. With some practice, you can even also strip insulation. Although you can cut things like screws and nails with them, I would instead recommend using bolt cutters for that. In this pocket here, we have a razor blade scraper tool. I've flipped this razor blade inside out, opposite direction for storage, but when I'm going to use it, I take the screw out and flip it back around to use it. This is a very inexpensive tool, which I normally use to scrape paint and stuff off of windows and to clean hard surfaces, such as tile. You can also use it to remove caulking and adhesives. All right, in this pocket, we got some heavy duty scissors. This one has a nice little lock on the bottom to lock them closed. Um, I use this to cut soft metal sheets, such as copper and aluminum. I even, uh, and I could even cut some thin steel sheets. Uh, I have also used it on plastics, leather, cardboard, and other things like that. In this pocket here, we got a few things. We got carpenter's pencils and a marker. Now carpenter's pencils are basically pencils with more dense leather centers, and they do not dull as fast as regular pencils. Also their shape prevents them from rolling away from you and they are also much thicker so it's easier to hold them and grip them, especially since you're wearing gloves a lot of the time. And the marker here is just a permanent marker that I mainly use to mark metal surfaces or glossy surfaces, any surface that pencils uh, struggle marking. In this pocket here in the corner I have various brushes and even a toothbrush. Now I use these for basically cleaning different kinds of surfaces from dirt and grime and any other debris that you might come across. All right, in this pocket here, we've got a all-in-one tool. Basically this is a wire stripper, a cutter, and needle nose pliers all in one. Now this one even has a deburring feature. If you look here on the side, um, after you cut metal pipes, you can uh, stick it into the metal pipe end and just twist it around and it'll deburr the inside. Um, another feature specific to this one here, uh, it has um, these bolt cutting holes. If you look right here, these two holes. And basically what those are is you screw in uh, bolts into them and you can cut them shorter. And here it specifies the size, 632 and 832. Those are common sized bolts. Now this tool can strip different sizes of wires. It can strip 10, 12, 14, and 16 solid gauge wires. And it can also strip 12, 14, 16, and 18 stranded wires. If you plan to use these wire strippers for residential electrical work, uh, make sure it can strip 12 and 14 gauge wires if you're gonna buy one of these. Um, if you're planning to also work on appliances, air conditioners, dryers, heaters, things like that, also make sure they have 10 and eight gauge wire stripping capability as well. Now we're almost done with this side, but we got a couple more things. We got WD-40 over here. Um, you can use this for several different reasons. One of the main reasons that I carry it around is to loosen anything that's stuck. 
parts, bolts, things like that. And another common use is to lubricate things and also to protect metals from rust and corrosion. I use this often to clean my tools after, you know, they get wet or something like that. And uh, I love these small little bottles because I can carry them with me all around and they don't take up much space. Now hang in here we have some Teflon tape, Gorilla tape, and some Velcro. I got two types of Teflon tape here. I got yellow and white. The yellow tape is thicker and is used on gas piping mainly. And the white tape here is not as thick and it's usually used for water. The Gorilla tape is like a heavy duty, all purpose, all weather tape that you can commonly find in many home improvement stores. And the Velcro here is just for temporary bonding of things together like wiring and cables. Uh, it doesn't leave a sticky residue. Unlike zip ties, you do not need to cut them or anything like that. They're just reusable. All right, let's go ahead and rotate this bag around to this side here. On this side here, we got a voltage detector pen. This is a very good tool to have when working with electrical things around the house. Uh, you hold it close to anything you want to check if there is the presence of voltage. I use this as an extra measure to test things before touching them. Just in case, you know, I have forgotten to shut off the breaker or shut off the wrong breaker, basically, to an outlet or switch that I'm working on. And on this side here, we have a four inch C-clamp. This is a very versatile tool. It's mainly used to secure parts for assembly, fastening, gluing, things like that. You can even use it for welding. I have used this a lot to hold car, uh, cabinets together like side by side while screwing them together. And it's relatively small. You can carry it around. In this big box here, I have my wrench and socket set. I use this a lot to take things apart like appliances and panels. I have also used this when working on various car related projects such as taking a car door paneling off or loosening lighting housings, things like that. It has all the various different sizes of sockets, a nice little socket wrench. You can also use this with all those sockets and it has some extenders. And so it's an all around good set to have. It's relatively small as well. And I like how it fits right inside of this pocket here, nice and easily. Let's go ahead and continue by twisting this around to this side now. Let's start from the left. In this pocket here, I have one of the most used tools you'll possibly ever need, and it is a utility knife. This particular one can store up to, I think, three or four additional blades inside, and you can very quickly remove this one and use the new blades inside, so that's always good to have. I don't have to carry extra blades with me. I think the amount that it stores inside is enough uh, for a days of use, and so, this is good to score, cut, and trim various materials such as drywall, carpet, window screens, roof shingles, to name a few things off the top of my head. This tool is absolutely required. You should also have a good amount of spare blades with you. And in here I have a similar item except it's, it's a blade, just a regular blade. Um, it's basically used to do the same things. Sometimes it's easier to access things with a longer blade like this. All right, in the center pocket here, we have a torpedo level. Uh, this torpedo level is small and lightweight. It's got magnets here and here, so you can mount them against metal surfaces or metal piping, especially with this V-groove. You can very easily mount it to a side of piping. Um, this particular one has a rotating vial on this side here, so you can adjust the pitch. So you can basically uh, have this show you the level for any angle you're looking for, any pitch you're looking for. So it's really nice. Now for a long time I've been carrying uh, multiple screwdrivers of different kinds and sizes with me. Um, recently though I decided to go ahead and scrap all that for one multi-bit screwdriver 
just because I have a lot of tools I want to carry with me and not enough space in this one tool bag. And so I opted for a multi-bit screwdriver like this one. And basically you got two different Phillips and flat sizes here and another two sizes on this side. And on top of that, you can use this metal shaft here as basically a socket uh, or a nut driver because on one end it has 3 16 and on the other end has 932. And so you can use it just like a nut driver as well. So it's just a nice combination tool to have. Now over here, I do carry some precision screwdrivers. I know I said uh, this will cover most cases, but you do need to have some precision ones because sometimes uh, the holes you put them through to unscrew things are very tiny, basically the size of the screw heads, and you need these little thin shafts to work on those type of things. And uh, I often use these to take apart electric parts of appliances, like when replacing a circuit board. I've also used them on PCB screw terminals and adjust potentiometers, basically those little potentiometers that have little adjustment screws. Um, these are all always good to use on those as well. And also in the same pocket, we have a magnetic stud finder. Uh, this is a small magnetic stud finder and it's good to carry around with me since it's so tiny. Um, the way it works is basically you slide it across the wall and eventually it will find and stick to one of those drywall screws. And since drywall screws are screwed into the studs behind them, you will know basically from that where the studs are. Now we got a little pouch here with a little flap on top and inside I carry little stubby screwdrivers. They basically fit in tight spaces. Uh, they're very short compared to a regular screwdriver. And whenever you try to unscrew something in a very tight space that you cannot fit a large one like this into, this is what you go for. In the same pocket, we've got a couple of punch tools. And basically what these are is they're center punches and you usually mark points with them. Right before you drill into something, you center punch it and create a little recess. And from that, basically, when you're drilling, your drill doesn't slide around. It fits into the little recess that you punched out, and it makes your job a lot easier and more accurate. All right, let's move on to the final side of this tool bag. Now over here, clamped onto the side, we have various different kinds of security bits. And what you'll find in here are snake eye bits, Torx bits, tri-wings, uh, slotted one-way bits, and even some hex bits of different sizes. Every once in a while you'll encounter screws that use one of these and it is very difficult to unscrew them without these type of screw uh, security bits. I like this box because it has this little uh, clip that you can basically clip onto the side of your bag. And over here we have a 25 foot measuring tape. This is one of those things that you're going to use very often. So you want to have this somewhere where it's easy to reach and easy to get to. And uh, basically what it's for is to measure and to mark and to cut wood, metal and other things that you've measured. Uh, you'll use it to calculate also square footage of an area. You'll also use it as a uh, measuring for 16 inch increments when you're working with uh, home framing. Now I have a nice little zippered pocket here with a large side pocket and inside I carry a few smaller things. Here we have another razor blade scraping tool. Very similar to the other one I showed you guys earlier except it's a smaller size so it fits in smaller spaces. We have some razor blade replacements for those scraper tools. We have pipe cutter. So when working with pipes, you can go ahead and cut them up pretty easily with this tool. We got a carpenter's pencil sharpener. And the way this works is really neat. It has a little contour here or 
the shape of one of these guys so it's very easy to sharpen it with this we have a couple of different outlet testers so when installing uh, outlets you always want to test them afterwards this one in particular has a GFCI testing as well those are the ones that you usually install in kitchens and bathrooms and stuff like that so we got a couple of those and we also have an adapter to adapt uh, a non-grounded outlet to a grounded outlet and I mainly use this for when I'm working in an old house that doesn't have a grounding por uh, port and uh, the tools I'm using have the grounding probe and so you can't plug them into the old outlets so I use this to adapt that's pretty much it in this pocket all right so now for this side here on the inside pocket we have a drywall jab saw I use this tool to cut shapes into drywall and plaster for things like switch and power boxes and over here we have a magnetic pickup tool there's a magnet here in the end and it telescopes out and uh, this tool can be a lifesaver uh, it allows you to basically extend it out and reach most places that you have dropped something metallic something magnetic like screws bearings and so forth or if you accidentally drop your keys for example into the engine bay uh, or accidentally kick screws under the washer or the fridge you can just sort of use this tool to reach for them and take them out of crevices and places that are hard to get to over here we have pliers and uh, these are good to hold things with uh, to compress things different materials and uh, bend things with them as well I've bent a lot of different metal types and stuff like that so that's what this is mainly for that's what I use it for um, I found this at a garage sale for like a dollar it was fully rusted I uh, unrusted it and cleaned it up and now I'm using it over here we got a very aggressive looking tool these are called the locking pliers and basically you can lock them and unlock them uh, using this handle here so basically what these are for is you can use them like a clamp uh, you can use it to hold things you can use it to pull out like stubborn nails and staples or even um, you can pull out nuts and bolts that have been stripped or rounded and uh, it's just a nice heavy duty tool to have uh, when you need to get a tight grip on something and as you can see unlike regular pliers it's got jabbed or jagged uh, teeth like this so it does a much better job of holding on to something over here we have a combination square this is a small size combination square and you can loosen it like this and move the ruler on it around and you can tighten it it also has a level and so basically what I use this for is to mark 90 and 45 degrees in a precise way I also use it along with a pencil to slide uh, along edges of wood to make uh, long straight marks sometimes I also use it to make uh, to make sure saw blades are set correctly at 90 degrees here we have a claw bar tool this is a really nice tool for pulling out nails and also for uh, wedging it between moldings and pulling out, pulling out moldings from walls without damaging the wall basically here's a four-way rasp or filing tool and it's called four-way because it has four different uh, patterns slash textures on it and uh, basically uh, it allows you to rough shape wood and soft metals and plastics so and you can also uh, use the flat side here to uh, sharpen tools with it here in this corner we have a chisel this is a half inch chisel of course there's many sizes but I find this one is a good universal size to have on you and uh, 
basically what I use this for is to install door hinges and latches and strike plates. Um, I also often use it to scrape off paint, uh, stubborn paint, um, although there's other better tools for that. I also use it to make precise and clean cuts into wood. And the last thing left on this side down here is a speed square. And so I mainly uh, use the speed square to make 90 and 45 degree lines into lumber, like like a 4x4 or 2x4 lumber. I also use it as a saw guide to cut lumber after marking my lines. You can also use it to slide it across lumber to make long straight lines very easily uh, because of all these grooves that it has. You just put the, your pencil tip up against the groove and just slide it across the lumber to make, uh, to make your lines. Of course, you can make various de different degrees of lines with this one speed square. All right, so let's flip this over to the other side. On this side, uh, I've got clipped onto the side of the handle here, uh, the small zipper bag. And inside I carry some batteries and a headlight. These batteries are actually extra batteries for this headlight. And uh, having some kind of lighting is a must. Often I work in dark areas like when working under sinks or outside in the dark. Uh, sometimes when working on electrical stuff I need to cut off the power and I need another source of light. So let's go ahead and put, put this bag out of the way so we can see the rest of the tools on this side. Let's start off with the big one, the hammer. This is a 16 ounce rip claw hammer and uh, you use it obviously to drive nails and pull out nails using the claw on this side. And the reason why it's called rip claw is because the claw here is not curved. As you can see, it's a straight claw, uh, which makes it easier to use it as a wedge and to pry things apart, I think. And also the 16 ounce size is actually a, the perfect size for you because it's relatively lightweight and small. Directly behind the hammer, I have a 12 inch ruler and I use this just basically for measuring and also as a straight edge to mark straight lines. Over here I have a rubber mallet uh, with two different uh, density of materials on either side. This is the harder side, this is a softer side. And basically I use this to drive chisels or to free things that are stuck. Uh, a good thing about this is that it will not leave any like marring or marks on your material like a hammer would. And uh, it can be used on surfaces such as stone and wood without damaging it basically. All right, so here in this slot, I have a wonder bar. These go by various names. I like to call this one a wonder bar. And basically it's kind of like using a hammer, the claw side of the hammer. Uh, this can pull out nails and it can also be used as a wedge. However, this is uh, much smaller than a hammer and so it can fit into tighter spaces. Here we got a couple of different sized adjustable wrenches. Now instead of carrying a bunch of different wrenches with me, uh, I opted to use adjustable wrenches instead. You're going to want to have uh, two of these uh, because a lot of the jobs you do, a lot of the things you work on that you need a wrench on, sometimes there's two things that you got to hold and work in unison with, like two different nuts on one uh, bolt or something like that. And here we got an awl. This is a sort of a larger sized awl and basically I use this to punch holes into things or to enlarge existing holes with them. Uh, you can use it to mark uh, points or make dimples into wood. You can also use it uh, to open like caulking and adhes adhesive tubes. You know how you have to kind of cut off the tip and puncture a hole inside. You can use uh, something like this. And here we have zip ties. Everybody needs to have zip ties. If you're carrying some sort of tool bag, you got to have some zip ties in there. They always come in handy. Um, you can use them to tie wiring together, hang things, hold things together, 
Uh, there's just so many ways you can use it and it's extremely important to carry at least a few of these around with you. All right, finally moving on to the center of the bag. Let's start with these spring clamps. I got a couple of these uh, clamped onto the edge of the bag here. And similar to a uh, C-clamp, I use these to secure parts for assembly and fastening and gluing, stuff like that. I have this uh, zipper bag thrown on the top here. And inside, let's see what we got. So we got a bag of different types of glues and grease. I got some rubber gloves. some uh, marine goop and sandpaper tucked in this corner here I also have some gloves in this bag here in this pouch I have my uh, amp reader clamp so it's a multimeter as well not just for amps. And this could measure current via this clamp here. Um, I carry this AC line splitter with me as well so that I can uh, split the AC lines and measure the amps that way. Basically, in addition to current, this can also uh, measure uh, DC voltage and AC voltage. Uh, it can measure resistance. It could test diodes and a continuity test as well so it's a it's a really nice tool to have uh, you got to have something like this if you're planning to do anything electrical all right so last but not least i got a couple of parts boxes here that i can show you guys so i carry a lot of different little parts that might come in handy at specific times and uh, this one here in particular for example contains some nails screws, nuts, bolts, washers, wood dowels, uh, drywall anchors, rubber o-rings, screw-on wire connectors, and all sorts of different things like that. Uh, this one is more of a parts for electrical related work and uh, it contains things such as uh, fuses, uh, crimp wire connectors, uh, tweezers, and I don't know, various cable clips and some heat shrink as well just in case. All right, guys, that's it for now. Um, thank you guys for watching. Again, all these tools, uh, most of these tools, I should say, is available online. I'll have the links to them in the description of this video, including the tool bag I'm using. I bought this online on Amazon as well. So I'm planning to do another video on my drill and impact driver tool bag. It has basically everything I need along with all the attachments from my drill and impact driver. This is another tool bag that I take with me everywhere I go. Please subscribe and click the notifications button so that you guys can receive a notification when this new video comes out. And thank you guys for watching.